fans of high quality entertainment. Well, it's a very exciting day today. It's Thanksgiving too, but that's not why it's so exciting. It's so exciting because Glenn Kellaway from the basement is coming over any second. And uh, what we're going to do first is go out and pick up a couple of subs from Subway. I'm buying, like I always do. <laughs> and then we're going to come back to my apartment and we are going to rank and review the five CDs that we gave each other. And in a separate video, we're going to give each other five more CDs each to listen to for the next couple of weeks. And uh, this is a really, really exciting series. I don't know about you. <laughs> Maybe I'm the only one that's excited. Me and Glenn are the only ones that are excited about this series. But it really, I think it helps us both uh, appreciate music sometimes that neither of us would otherwise listen to and I've been very impressed. I've become a huge fan of Stephen Wilson thanks to Glenn. Uh, his album Hand Cannot Erase is I think it's one of the greatest albums ever and I still need to check out a lot more of his catalog. And so Glenn should be here any minute. Did I mention I'm buying? No. We, we take turns buying lunch when we do this. We're pretty fair with each other, for the most part. <laughs> so, uh, I'll see you in a few minutes, hopefully with Glenn Kellaway from the basement, my basement, my basement apartment. And Middens is excited to see Glenn again although you love Molly a lot more. When Molly came here, hadn't seen Molly in a few months. I'm gonna ramble for a second. She, she meowed, and then Molly went over to pet Jenks, and Middens meowed again at her, because she, she had missed Molly. She doesn't miss Glenn Kellaway from the basement. You won't see her meow. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Yes, he's back. I'm going to change my glasses. These are my other glasses. Them into. into these glasses that I don't care for as much. I don't even need my glasses. Okay. It's good to see you. It's good to see you again, Glenn. Are you on? Is that recording? It is recording, Glenn. Oh. It's good to see you too, Larry. Yeah. It's been too long. Yeah. So here we are. We both listened to... Uh, we had a CD exchange of five CDs, and is, has it been two weeks, I guess? At least. Wow. Yeah. And we are about to rank and review them, and then in our next video, we're giving each other five more CDs to listen to for the next couple of weeks. Five, yeah. And this is going to go on for the next 20 years. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in, a, dead, but I'm in an old... One of my kids. We're both in an old folks Yeah, home. yeah. Hmm. Okay, number five, Glenn. Number What's five. your number five? So we, should we do a recap and show the, vid, the, the CDs? Oh yeah, let's mix them up. Okay. So I don't know. So Larry gave me Lord Such and his heavy friends. Can Heat, Hallelujah. Jerry Lee Lewis, live at the Star Club in 1964. Yes, Key Studio and Stock Forest Group, which is kind of the uh, pre-Blue Oyster Cult band. Yeah. And Glenn gave me really crappy CDs. Anonymous, Anonymous, Inside the Shadow. Yeah, I was worried about how to pronounce Anonymous. Is that Pato? Pato, I think. Pato. Could be Pato. Pato? Pato. Whatever, who cares. Caravan? In the Land of Grey and Pink. Uh, I've never heard of this, this band. The Monkees. Good Times. And introducing the Bo Brummels. Brummels, yeah. Bo Brummels. There we go. There we go. So you want my number five? Number five. Remember to like this video and leave a comment below. I think, Larry, you're going to be surprised at my pins. I'm not going to cry, am I? My number five, 
Jerry I am Lewis. shocked. I, I were... think I had that at number two, right? Yeah. Wow. Jerry Lee Lewis live at the Star Club. Now, first of all, musically, it's fantastic. I mean, it's just great rock and roll, and, and Jerry Lee's on fire. Yeah. It's a uh, really, like, high-energy yeah. album. Uh, do you have any other song choices? Do you have Jerry fine. Lee Lewis? Yeah. No, I don't have any Jerry yeah. Lee Lewis, but I love Jerry Lee Lewis. Yeah. But you know what bothers me about this, and it's just a picky thing with my ears? I, the, the the sound quality is is not good. Oh. I didn't like I it. I didn't notice it. I didn't like it. It kind of was making my ears yeah. bleed when I was listening to yeah. it. It was the mix, like his well, voice is really uh, yeah. up in the mix and yeah. the hands not. And yeah. So I, I was, the more I listened to it, the more I'm going, it, the music's fantastic, but I wish it would have been recorded better. But it sounds like an audience tape or something. It doesn't mm. really sound like it was. I thought it sounded pretty good on headphones. Recording. But what does this guy know? Yeah, I don't know anything. He's like an audio expert. But that, no, I'm not. But that's, uh, I'm, I'm, that's yeah. my number five. Yeah, okay. Well, you grabbed it because you want well, it back. Well, no, there's the songs he does. I just thought, especially the uh, the whole lot of shaking going on, the band was just incredible. Yeah. Like, they I were agree. killing them. And um, the Star Club is famous for the Beatles uh, before they got famous playing yep. the Star Club in Hamburg. Yep. Let's see. These, get these. Your number five. My number five is... Is this one, the Bo Brummels? Okay. It, yeah, it was okay. <laughs> I actually liked it the most. I, I don't think this is a headphones. You know, I listen on headphones. Mm -hmm. This isn't really a headphones quality recording. But just playing it on my computer today, you know, out in the open on the speakers, I enjoyed it more. I mean, I did enjoy it. Did you but, recognize some of the hits? Oh yeah, uh, laugh, laugh, yeah. and just a little. Right? They sound kind of beatle like yeah, the, a little the harmonies. And the the, the and one thing I don't like is there's a couple of songs where the other guy is singing and mm -hmm. he can't sing. Yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's good 60s pop. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Is. And uh, there's one song here. Um, oh, Lonesome Me. Even, even like Oh, Lonesome Me, it's kind of... They're all energetic and mm -hmm. upbeat and everything. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's good. I would give it, for me, I'd give it like a six out of ten. That works. Yeah. Glenn, I don't want oh, that. Okay, I'm taking that back. <laughs> My number four. Yeah. Lord Such and His Heavy Friends. I really like this. I know. <laughs> I even, you know, when I rebought that after years and years, I used to only like a couple of songs, but it's the music is so good. Who music cares about the great. vocals? The guitars are fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it's, and you it's, get uh, used to his vocals after a while. It's Jimmy Page, Jeff Beck, John Bonham, Nicky Hopkins, Noel Redding. Uh, I mean, how could it be bad? Yeah. And the guy's vocals, I mean, he's... I started to look up reviews of the album after I listened Some to Some people say that's the worst album ever. And I can't yeah. believe they're saying that. Yeah. It's not so, that bad. No. I don't even mind his vocals. Yeah. Flashing Lights is awesome. Yeah. Flashing a, Lights. I thought music is great. Didn't mind the vocals. I like it. Yeah, voted worst album of all time. I did. I don't get that at all. Yeah. Man. <coughs> Abba. <coughs> Excuse me, it's something in my throat. But number four. You can have that back. Thank you. So would you buy that? No. Well, <laughs> you know what? I might. If I yeah? Say, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My number four. Okay. It's good. I like it. I liked it more with every lesson. Yeah, it's a grower. The, the last one is when it, maybe not in the rankings, but it went up a notch or two. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's just so, it's like lightweight prog rock. It's a little, uh, like really timid or whatever. Yeah. But the songs are good. I love uh, In the Land of Grey and Pink, that song. And the, the long instrumental, not instrumental, but the long track, Nine Feet Underground. Lots of keyboard work on this. Mm -hmm. More yeah, than it's lots guitar. Of, yeah, the guitar, uh, the keyboard player is really good. But it's now. a really, ple it's a pleasant, Laid back kind of, uh, and they're the band's awesome. So I would give this at least an eight out of ten. Wow. It was really good. 
Would I buy it? I don't think I would buy it. You never know. I'll have to but, play one of their other albums for yeah. you that I think is better. Yeah. That's really yeah, interesting. But it was interesting, but very yeah. enjoyable. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Okay. My number three. Can he? Yeah. But it's a great album. Yeah. Can he's an amazing blues band. I figured you would really enjoy it. it. Yeah, yeah. It's 10 out of 10. I mean, there's nothing that, uh, yeah. bad. There's not a bad note on the whole album. <coughs> yeah, it's just a great blues album. There's, sure. I think the, the second last track, though, they're doing this stereo panning with yeah. the guitar, and it's so, you know, it's of its time, right? It's like, it's so annoying, and no, don't do that. You're ruining the song. <laughs> Yeah, no, I really, uh, yeah, yeah, I, w I would buy this if I yeah. see it, yeah, because yeah. I don't have enough canned heat, I've got Boogie with canned heat, I think it's the only one I have, yeah. and, and Hooker and Heat I have, yeah, there's the bam, but, uh, yeah, fantastic, if you're a blues fan, and you see this, pick it up, yep, oh, it's my oh. turn, number three, Larry, number three, now this is where I start to struggle, Glenn, because, Three could easily be two. Oh. And two could easily be three. Maybe. Anonymous. Anonymous. On the first listen, I I didn't really get it. But th this, the story with this album is it came out in the mid-70s, right? And there were only 300 vinyl copies made. Mm -hmm. And then they were like in a warehouse or something and somebody came across them and it became a bit of a, well, a big cult for, exactly. but, but for unknown albums, what's that? When, when people are into unknown albums in the community, is there a word for uh, it? Or? Not that I'm aware yeah. of. But. but this became kind of popular in a way. Yeah. And I can see why. It's like a cross between Fleetwood Mac doing prog, which I've read about anyway, but Fleetwood Mac being proggy, with Jefferson Airplane and and the vocals, you know, the female and the male, mm -hmm. and the way they sing together, the guitar work shivers up my spine, Glenn. Shivers up your it's, spine. Yeah. The more I, I hold on a second. Your your anatomy. Uh, you need anatomy lessons. You can touch my arm. arm. That's my arm. But your spine's here. You said shivers up my spine. <laughs> <laughs> it's Larry's spine. My art. My spine is here. That's why I have health issues. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, like Shadow Lay. So if you had no arms, you'd be spineless. That's right. Spineless tap. <laughs> Shadow Lay is awesome. Every song. Oh, uh, I'm glad you like yeah. that one. I wasn't yeah. sure about giving you that Anybody one. that wants should seriously check this album out. Uh, it's obscure. It's, it's on YouTube, at least. Yeah, it's but obscure. The only thing is, the sound quality is good, but it could be, you know, it's it's... And they, they took this, I think, from a vinyl, because you can hear mm -hmm. a little bit of a uh, no yeah. surface noise once in a while. But it's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I would actually buy this. Wow. Ten out of ten. I'll sell that to you for 20 bucks. No, I don't want it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait, wait. You have what left? Key Studio and what? Uh, and Stock Forest Group. Yeah, I know that Key Studio is your number two pick. No. Dang it! The Stock Forest Group is Wasn't that two. awesome? This is a great record. Oh, ten yeah. out of ten, yeah. I'm buying this. Yes. Yes, if I can find it, I'm buying it. Yeah. 1970. Yeah. And the production is better than some of the later Blue Easter Cult. That's on album. Yeah. Saint Cecilia, look, their first track is like a country, almost sounds like country rock. Yeah. But then it uh, goes off into like a psych. There's like a track five I made note of is like a psych guitar. It's a, it's, it's just yeah. a really really solid album from start yeah. to finish. These are the Blue Oyster Cult guys before they were Blue Oyster yeah. Cult. Yeah, and Buck Dharma on guitar. Lots of awesome guitar work on that, Glenn. Yes. Yeah. There is. And can you? Is there some Grateful Dead vibes in that or not? Yeah, I think yeah. so. It's a, sometimes it gets a bit. Yeah. Psychedelic kind of, uh, yeah. Yeah. Really, really like this one. 10 out of 10. Number two, Glenn. You're going to be disappointed. I'm sorry, Glenn. I'm not disappointed. <laughs> I know. I'm glad, I'm glad you raised it. The first time, first time I heard this, maybe even the second time, 
I found the vocals a bit grating, like I didn't... I oh, thought, really? That's thought like it was, the singers that yeah, had over. I didn't like the vocals, yeah. and then I got into it, and I think the, the singer's awesome now. He's kind of like a cross between, what was I thinking you said? Rod Stewart and Paul Rogers. Okay. I was even he's got a, a gravelly voice. Of. Yeah, Steve Marriott. Yeah. yeah. And anyway, it's just a three ba uh, bass guitar drums, and the lead singer is Mike. Is it Mike Battle? And every song is awesome. Lots of the guitarist is really good. Really too. good. Uh, what's his name? He's from uh, Sweden or something. I can't remember his name. We actually had a I had a comment all, all, on our all video. Ollie Holstrom. Yeah. Yeah. I had a comment on my video, on our video, when I gave that to you that somebody's saying that guitar player's really good. Yeah, yes. and the drums and yeah. the bass. Great sounding CD. Too, yeah. Right? So They've got like three or four albums. Yeah, that's, that's the they best have, on Amazon, they have all three or four of them together remastered for like oh, yeah. $40. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, good band. All the albums are good, but that, yeah. that definitely my favorite. Check them out on YouTube. Pado. Great Pado. band. Yeah. Well, I'm glad. I wonder what your number one's I don't be. know, Glenn. Don't look. <laughs> okay. This is my number one by a mile. Yeah. I, I, I was so impressed. I've never heard this before. Yeah. It's fantastic. And every listen gets better, Glenn. It's, yes. Yes. This is... Uh, it's as good as the yes early albums. stuff. Yes. It's one of the best Yes albums I've ever yes, heard. Yes, Glenn. That's what I wanted to hear. And I immediately went on YouTube to order it, and you can't get it. Really? It's like 40 bucks. You can't have that one, Glenn. Well, we'll see. Yeah. <clears throat> If you're a Yes fan and you haven't heard Key Studio, you have to. Um, Mind Drive. Yep. Oh. Yep. Killer. Yep. Uh, what else? Uh, Be the One. Yeah. Second song. Yep. Steve Howe's acoustic guitar and Mind Mind Drive is yep. freaking awesome. Uh, track five is Sign Language. And there's a beautiful solo at the end yeah. of that, and then there's an acoustic intro to track six, which is that. That is was it, it, this. Yeah. Tw Twenty out of ten. Yep. I, I'm looking for this. Yep. You know you can't get those all those studio tracks on the two well, keys to ascend. But for some reason, I guess you don't. They kind of get lost in the. In the mix of that whole album, like, I know, and I think Rick Wakeman didn't like them doing that. He he's, he thought, and and Steve Howe, I think, put this together. But they I should have just put it out as a studio. I looked album. up my Keys of Ascension album though, and I didn't see these tracks. Yeah, here, I've got them. They're somewhere, Larry, right here. There's one. Yeah, I got that. Is that right here. Like that? that that is. Yeah, that's on there. Yeah. And be the Mind one. Drive? Be the one. No, only two studio. Oh, only two. And on the other there. one. Yeah, there it is, right there. And the other one, new studio tracks on disc two. See, that's the rest of them. Um, I don't have keys to Ascension two. Well, that's what that's I need why. Then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, fantastic. Yep. I need to get that. And this is great too. The live versions yeah. of stuff. Fantastic. Yep. So impressed. I want that back one. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to steal that too. Yeah, and that one too, Stock Force Group. Well, how come I only have three? Because I wanted to keep this one, Glenn. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, this Larry guy, you think you, you, think you know him. You're not going to believe what number one is, because I sure don't. It's the friggin' monkeys. So, uh,. The first time I thought it was okay. The first song, though, "Good Times," I didn't realize at first it's a it's an old recording by Harry Nilsson, and mm -hmm. then Dave, uh, Mickey Dolenz just adds his vocals. Yeah. So, so I was thinking the production wasn't that good, right? But it's just that track. Uh, but I like it now a lot. And then you bring me the su you bring the summer. She makes me laugh. Our own world. Got to give it time. They're all great. I, I like them more of every listen. Me and Magda there we go. That would be in my top ten, Glenn. A top it's one of the best two or three. song, be, best uh, ballad. Searing the vocalist. Amazing, so beautiful, gorgeous. Yes. You must hear this track. It is fantastic. It's, it's one of the oh, top, it's top the way Mike sings it. It's 
<coughs> really, really good. And then the rest of it, uh, Whatever's Right, Love to Love, Little Girl by Peter Tork is yeah. superb. Birth of an Accidental yes, Hipster that's written is by, awesome. Uh, one of the Oasis guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't Born to Follow. Well, which is what was from Easy Rider. Remember the birds did that song yeah, in Easy yeah. Rider? I Know What I, I Know, which is another really nice Mike Nesmith. I guess when he does this on the, the latest tour, mm -hmm. there's always a line in it and he breaks down and he cries. Oh, it's yeah. on YouTube. Oh, right? wow. Yeah. And then I was there and I'm told I had a good time. This is as good as any monkey's music from the 60s. Absolutely. And what I like about it is they made it sound, yeah. you know, kind of current, but still the yeah. 60s vibe to it. And even, uh, which one is Davy Jones' song here? Little Girl. Yeah. No. Uh -huh. Love to Love. When, when that comes on, it's like, it doesn't feel out of place. It's like, oh, there's, it's Davy's track. You know what I mean? It doesn't seem like it's just... Yeah, stuck on the CD. Yeah. So this is, what a way for them to end their, yeah. their album. When that album came out, I ignored it. I just went, oh, come on, yeah. how good can that be? Yeah. And I bought that used one day. I found it like for eight bucks or something. Yeah. I went, well, I got to try it. Yeah. I went, oh, man, what was I waiting for? Yeah. Like, this is fantastic. Just, and Mickey Dolan sounds awesome he on does. it. He does. Yeah. Oh, wow, I'm glad, you, yeah. I'm glad that's your number one. Ten out of ten. At least. Eleven out of Eleven ten. Out of ten. Ten and a half. Wow. So that's it. I'm, uh, so that's why this series is so, it's one of my favorite series because, like I was saying to Glenn earlier, we, I wouldn't listen to a lot of these unless I was forced to by Glenn. <laughs> okay, let's, let's talk about what, what we thought, how we were going to rank them. I wrote down what you told me. Yeah, what did I say? <laughs> you said that Jerry Lee Lewis would be my number one and it was my number five. <laughs> Stock Forest Group, you said two, you got that right. Hallelujah, you said three, which you got right. Keystone Studios, you said fourth, wow. which was first. Yeah. And Lord Such, fifth, which was fourth. Yeah. I just thought with the Yes tracks, it, it takes a few lessons, right, sometimes. Oh, well, but then, you know. yeah, I, I would say by the, by the second time I listened through, I'm yeah. going, oh my God, there's some yeah. gems on here. Yeah. And okay. with and so with mine, I predicted you would do say good times first, yeah, which I was right. Bull Brommel second, which was your fifth. Caravan third, which I think was your fourth. Paddle fourth, which I think was your second. second. And anonymous fifth, which was your third. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, we were very good. <laughs> We don't know each other at all. Oh. It's very early in our relationship. <laughs> wow, that was very cool. So that's it. Now we're gonna, going to do another video where we exchange five more crappy CDs that I have to listen to for the next two oh, weeks. I know. It's painful. Oh. Okay. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.